Happy Mother's Day. Hello, my name is Samantha Bishop, and we are so glad you decided to join us here at First Pentecostal Church for a time of worship and the Word. We have a few announcements we would like to share with you for this week, as well as a few announcements coming up. Tonight at 6 p.m. is our discipleship classes. Our English classes are held at the West Level 3 and our Spanish-speaking classes above the Connect Cafe. Be sure to come early for refreshments. Also at 6 p.m. is our kids' choir rehearsals. Wednesday night at our North Hills campus is our Spanish-speaking service beginning at 7 p.m. Nos gustaría invitarlo a estar con nosotros en el servicio de habla hispana este miércoles a las 7 p.m. Cada semana después del servicio tenemos una cena especial preparada para usted y su familia. Nos vemos el miércoles por la noche. No falte. Thursday at 10.30 a.m., our Young Mothers Group will be having a service in the chapel with Sister Carly Blankenship as our speaker. Friday at 10.30 a.m., our Kingdom Builders Ministry will be meeting in the chapel. Friday night, Connect Junior High will be getting together for pickleball and volleyball. Connect High will be playing ultimate frisbee and flag football at the field. Connect College and Career will be playing volleyball. Calvary Academy will be hosting several events this coming week. K-5, 5th grade, and 8th grades will be having graduation ceremony this Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. The second mile session auction will be happening this Thursday at the venue in Oakdale. Calvary Academy will be having a commencement ceremony next Sunday, May 21st at 7 p.m. If you are watching on our Facebook and YouTube channels, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to stay connected to all the exciting things happening around FPC. If you are a guest with us, you should have received a welcome folder. Inside this folder is a Connect card. If you will please take just a couple of minutes and fill out this information so we can get better acquainted with you and also know how to serve you best. On the back of the Connect card is a prayer covering. If you have a prayer need, fill out this card and this week and forward, our church will pray over your needs. If you are watching online, please visit fpcnlr.com forward slash guest card to complete this information. On behalf of First Pentecostal Church of North Rock, we are honored that you chose to worship with us. At this time, please stand and let us worship the Lord together. Praise the Lord, FPC. Are you thankful to be in the house of God? Aren't you thankful that this Mother's Day finds you in the house of the Lord? Worship the Lord with us if you would. Thank you, Jesus. It's not just a story. It's a living, breathing, walking testimony of a God so good he leave his home in glory. For the world he loved, for the world that he so loved. It's not just a story. I believe in the life of Jesus. I believe that he conquered death. I believe in the resurrection. I believe that he's coming back again. I believe that his spirit's with us. I believe that he gives us power. If I said I got here on my own, I'd be lying Cause my eyes have seen the goodness of the Father We're the ones He loves, we're the ones that He so loves I can't deny it I believe in the life of Jesus Direction. 
have a need in this house, whether it be a healing, maybe just a situation you need God to step in and move for you. I'd like to invite you to the front. Our ministry is going to meet you down here and pray with you today. Y'all worship with us.
make your way back to the pew. Don't you love what we feel in this house right now? As, uh, if the ushers will prepare, uh, here in just a moment, we're gonna take up the tithe and the offering. We'll receive those. The ushers will be stationed around the sanctuary. We'll also receive it in the kiosks in the back. And we have, for those who are cashless among us, we have ways to text your offering in and you can use Cash App. The information's behind me on the screen. You'll see that there. And at this time, I wanna welcome everybody in the house this morning, but mostly the mamas, the mothers, the mommies, every single one of you, we honor you this morning. Hey, and they deserve every bit of it. You know, uh, a couple of days ago, I, I took my children, I've got three kids, I took them to the store to pick out their Mother's Day cards. And I purposely stood back and just let them have at it. I said, go pick out whatever you want. And my two girls came back with just the sweetest, most sentimental, beautiful cards. And my four-year-old son came back and he was beaming with pride. He had picked out the perfect card. When I saw it, I chuckled, but I said, okay, we're, we're gonna roll with it, let's go. So this morning, my wife opened up her Mother's Day card from my four-year-old son, and on the front of it, it was a group of pigs with party hats and streamers. And as you opened the card up, it said, I hope you have a pig-sized birthday today. <laughs> but he was as happy as he could be. And he was just purely excited to give that to his mommy. And you know, I've heard though, many times, that the first time we see the face of God is through our mother's face. That pure love that they, they show 
is the first time that we really start to experience that, that purest form of love. And so you know, we just sang, I know I may not have much fit for a king. And how many times have we brought something that we just, they may be laughing at, but we think it's the absolute best that we can give. And we're bringing up the, the, the best that we have. It's not fit for a king, but it's that pure love, that pure worship. And just like we laughed and we chuckled, but we love and we cherish that Mother's Day card. God loves every time we lift our hands in pure worship. And so we, we worship the Lord this morning. We honor our mothers. And we're so excited that everyone has been here. So we're about to go to the Lord in prayer over this offering. But as soon as we do that, once you give your offering, we encourage you to step out of your pew, step out of your section. If your mom's here, find her, hug her neck, tell her how much you love her. If she's not or if on your way to her, shake somebody's hand, introduce yourself to someone you don't know. And if you were a visitor, this is your first time, you stepped in here and you did not receive a guest card. If you did not get one of those, it's an information packet. Our ushers are standing around. They have those in their hands. They're ready to give those over to you. So if you did not get one, find one of the ushers standing around. So let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. God, we thank you so much for the privilege of being in your house this morning. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to sow our seed and to give to your kingdom, Lord. We ask that you use that for your glory and for your honor. And we, God, we bring the mothers of every one of them to you. We honor them today. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. All right, when the band will play, you're free to give.
I think you're the prettiest girl Probably in the whole wide world Sometimes I watch you brush your hair You don't even know I'm there and not here Baby, you don't want to catch a cold As you're kneeling down, zipping up my coat You're always looking out for me But your kiss upon my cheek Keeps me warmer than you know I've never had to find out what it's like to be alone And as far as I know, Mom is just another word for home They say I'm the spitting image of the one I look up to And I just smile If anyone can see it's true
to me. of your tears in the midst of your hard times he's still good he's still God come on let's praise him all over this sanctuary today hallelujah 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 you've been better than good to me you've been better than good to me you may Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
one more time in this house today. Can we give him the praise he is worthy of receiving? Open up your mouth. Clap your hands. Give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, it feels good in this house today, and it sure is wonderful to see you in the sanctuary today. God bless all of you who have joined in this house today. Those watching online, we greet you in the name of Jesus. We're so glad you're a part of this service today. And I think it would just be great right now if once again we honor all the mothers that are in this house today. Come on, let's show our honor to them today. I am acutely aware that these type of services can be bittersweet and there are people here today that maybe this is your first Mother's Day without your mother or maybe it's your first Mother's Day without your child and we just want you to know we love you and we're praying for you as well today and we honor all living and all deceased mothers here today. I'm thankful for my godly grandmother who's able to be here with us today. I give high honor to my grandmother. She is an amazing woman, and we are so blessed that she's able to be with us today. Before we go to the word of the Lord, I want us to pray over the needs of this church. We want to pray for Sister Melissa Brock, Sister Juanita Brown for complete restoration of her health. We want to pray for Brother Jeff Cooper, whose father passed away. And our prayers are with the Copeland family at the passing of a mighty warrior for the name of Jesus. Brother Tim Copeland passed away. We want to be in prayer for his family. And we also want to be in prayer for Brother... Uh, Kevin Nelson, who has uh, been dealing with uh, heart problems, and, and we know that God is able to give him a healing touch. So today, if you have a need, we believe God hears. We believe God sees. So lift your hands, and let's pray over all the needs that are in this house today. Come on. Lord Jesus, you see the needs that are represented in this house. God, I pray right now that you would bring comfort and peace, healing and strength. Lord, let your virtue flow throughout this sanctuary to those joining us online today. Father, we come to you today needing your help like never before. And we're so thankful to know that you hear our prayers and you see our tears and you are touched, Lord, with our feelings and we thank you for it today. We give you praise, honor, and glory today. Hallelujah. Well, why don't we one more time put our hands together and give this great King of kings and Lord of lords praise here today. Can we do that? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want to also give honor to my wife. I'm thankful for a godly wife and mother. It's interesting how things happen, uh, but as you know, she's over there on the organ today and the most beautiful organ player we have at the church, but a few years ago online, they started calling her church mother. <laughs> so I'm thankful for the church mother. <laughs> <laughs> then I give honor to my, my sister. I love and appreciate her. If you saw the beautiful floral display out in the front, that's all her creation, her team's efforts. Thank you for all the work that goes on. I tell you, aren't we blessed, church, to have such wonderful people that make these special moments what they are to us? What do you think about those 
parking attendants and when you drive up, people helping you find a place to park. Let me tell you, if you're a guest here today, if you're a guest here today, where they let you off on the shuttle, you can get right back there and they'll take you back to your car. We don't just drop you off, we pick you up, take you back to your car. So we're blessed today. Hallelujah. Next weekend's gonna be a great time. May the 21st is our graduation Sunday. If you have graduated uh, or are graduating this summer, we want to recognize you, so please be a part of that service. You can find out information on the website and how to sign up. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25. 31, verse 25. Well, we were blessed to get to spend a couple of days in Washington, D.C., and we got to be with this uh, Calvary Academy senior class and we're so proud of these young people and good to be back in God's house on the Lord's day. Proverbs 31 25, strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. Strength and honor, one translation says dignity. Strength and dignity are her clothing clothing. So today I'm going to preach and I want God's help. If you're going to help me obey God, I want you to extend your hand toward this pulpit and we're going to join together and we're going to ask God to touch us. Now listen to me today before we pray. This is not just a message for mothers. This is a message for every person that is in this house. Lord, we need you today. God, I pray you would strengthen us let there be a divine connection between the pulpit and the pew today. Lord, open my mouth, fill it with what you would have for me to say today. Anoint us to hear your word, to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. Queen Elizabeth I was very conscious of her appearance. Her image was engineered to convey wealth, authority, and power. She once said, I have already joined myself in marriage to a husband, namely the kingdom of England. She knew that her actions and image formed her identity which in turn became a symbol for England. During her reign, Elizabeth's image was carefully engineered to convey wealth, authority, and power, both at home and abroad. As her reign progressed, Queen Elizabeth began to dress for the part of the Virgin Queen an image that she created to transmit the nation's growing stature and confidence. Her wardrobe was full of gowns of rich fabrics adorned with jewels and elaborate surface detail, which were both imposing and communicated wealth and status. Elizabeth also demanded a sense of style from those around her, and her courtiers spent vast sums of money on their wardrobes to catch the eye of the queen. In Elizabeth's era, dress was also a means of expressing social hierarchy. And the queen believed that one's dress should suit but not exceed one's rank. Elizabeth's appearance stressed her rank as head of state and church and pecking order was reinforced by legal restrictions. Detailed accounts of the royal wardrobe were kept. These records detail the types, amounts, and costs of fabrics purchased, the suppliers used, and the type of garments produced. At her death, 
Over 2,000 gowns were recorded in Elizabeth's wardrobe. These accounts and portraits of the period provide much of the valuable information about Elizabethan dress. And today, I preach from this title, The Vestments of Her Wardrobe. The Vestments of Her Wardrobe. Understand today that the church is our mother. The Apostle Paul shares this insight in Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. He says, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem was the epicenter of Pentecost. It was the birthplace of the church. Jesus said that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. He again foretold in Acts the first chapter, the eighth verse, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I'm thankful today for the church. I'm thankful today to be a part of the church of the living God. Maybe you walked in here for the very first time and you've come here today and you say, well, what does First Pentecostal Church mean? Well, let me tell you, Pentecost was a Jewish feast day and on that day, God chose to pour his spirit out upon all flesh beginning at Jerusalem. And 2,000 years later, And thousands of miles away from Jerusalem, God is still pouring out his spirit upon all flesh, even those of us who are gathered in this sanctuary on this special day to celebrate mothers. We are in the house of God, and this is the church. Now, we understand that if Jerusalem or the church is our mother, then Who are we? Look at your neighbor and say, who are you? Let me tell you today who you are. You are the bride of Christ. The imagery of a bride did not begin in the New Testament. In fact, the Old Testament is where the bridal imagery originated. The Lord looked at his people, Israel, as his bride. Isaiah records in the 62nd chapter, for as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. John the Baptist understood that Jesus was the bridegroom and that the people were the bride. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase and I must decrease. You understand today that the concept of the bride of Christ is further developed in the writings of the apostle Paul. In fact, we come to Ephesians chapter 5. Paul is admonishing husbands to love their wives. He says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without 
blemish. He continues to articulate the roles and responsibilities of husbands and wives in marriage. But at the end of this discourse, Paul says this, this mystery is great, but I speak concerning Christ and of the assembly. I want you to know today that if you have been washed in his blood, you are a part of his bride and he loves his bride with a godly love and jealousy. Second Corinthians, Paul says, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. We are his bride. We as the church today are his bride and we are looking forward to the day when we will meet the bridegroom. Anybody here today looking forward to that day? I love the old song that says, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I'm here to preach to you today and tell you we are his bride. He is our bridegroom. And we say, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. We're waiting on you. We're preparing for you. We are ready. We want to receive the bridegroom. So if we are his bride, then we have certain vestments. We have certain uh, things to put on, certain uh, robes, if you will, certain pieces of attire to dress ourselves in. If we are his, his bride, then there are vestments in our wardrobe. I want to talk to you today about some of those vestments, some of those things that we are to be uh, clothed in today. The first vestment is salvation. It's the most important thing you can put on. The most important thing you can do is be clothed with salvation. The psalmist said in 132, her priests I will clothe with salvation and her saints will shout for joy. The Apostle Paul says in Galatians, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. What better garment could we put on today than the salvation of Jesus Christ? I just want to tell you today, if you haven't been washed in his blood, if you've never been baptized for the remission of your sins, I'm happy to tell you that after this service, we'll open the baptistry. You can come. We've got changes of clothes. We've got everything you need to put on that beautiful vestment of salvation. We have we have been blessed today to put on the vestment of salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We are saved by the name of Jesus. And today we put on the vestment. We put on the cloak of Jesus Christ. You know what's beautiful? We can put on the vestment of righteousness. Isaiah 61, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. I'm telling you today that we have a vestment called righteousness. It's not our own righteousness. It's not our own good. It's not how good we are when we realize that we are putting on his vestment of righteousness. There is no good thing in us. In fact, our own righteousness is as filthy rags. 
but we have the opportunity to open up the wardrobe and take out the vestment of righteousness and put it on our backs. I'm happy to tell you today, you have the opportunity to wear the vestment of righteousness. You may say, well, Pastor, you don't understand how bad I've been. You don't understand how deep in sin I am. You don't understand what my life is, is, is like. You don't, you don't have any clue of all the things I've endured and, and all the filthy thoughts in my mind and the blackness of my heart and, and the destructive thoughts that I feel and, and all of the things I'm going through. I'm happy to tell you today that you can trade all of that old junk. You can trade those dirty garments and you can go like a queen goes to her armoire and you can open it up and take out the vestment of salvation and the vestment of righteousness and trade all those other things for these beautiful garments oh yeah that's it go ahead and shout go ahead and run go ahead and rejoice church you want to know who's running? It's people that have traded their old dirty garments of sin and replaced them with garments of righteousness. Not our own righteousness, but his righteousness. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have the opportunity to put on the vestment of praise. The vestment of of praise. Isaiah said to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. I'm telling you today, what a great exchange. We give him our ashes and he gives us his beauty. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You may be here today and your spirit may be weighted down with sin. It may be weighted down with trials. You may be weighted down here today with grief, but I want you to know it's not God's will for you to stay weighted down with the spirit of heaviness. Take off that vestment of heaviness and put on that vestment of praise. Get your feet a dancing. Get your arms a waving. Get your mouth a speaking. It's time to put on the vestment of praise. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I know what they say, it's Mother's Day. You need to have a little cute message and keep it real short and let's go on to eat brunch or lunch or whatever you're gonna do. But I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. God wants to take somebody's old rags off and give you a vestment of praise. Let me tell you what coordinates with praise. You want a match today? <laughs> Go ahead and, and add the vestment of gladness with the vestment of praise. The psalmist said in Psalm 30, you have turned my mourning into dancing. Oh, hallelujah. You have removed my sackcloth. You've taken off the garment that identifies me as a mourner and you have clothed me with gladness to the end that my heart may sing praise to you and not be silent. Oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. If anybody in this house today has that garment, that vestment of gladness on, could you just give God the praise that he's worthy of today? Could you put a smile on your face? Yes, 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 yes. Come on, there's a vestment of praise and gladness in your wardrobe. It's time for you to take the sackcloth off and put on the vestment of gladness. Put on the vestment of praise. Today is the day, today is the day. Our text today is from the 31st chapter of Proverbs. It's a beautiful proverb. 
It's a beautiful chapter. It's, it speaks of a wise and noble woman. And in this chapter, we learn what that type of woman does. She's industrious. She's affectionate. She is serving. She is loving. She is caring. Now, remember today, we're talking about mothers here, but we're also talking about the church. We're talking about all of us in this house today. And when we read Proverbs 31, don't just read it in one dimension. Go ahead and read it multidimensional. Look at it as yourself. It is God's will that we put on strength and dignity. Put on strength and honor. We look around our world today, and to be honest, they don't have a lot on, period. But what they do have on is often shameful. It's often, it's often a symbol of sin. It's often a symbol of unrighteousness, and it's often shameful. But God has given us the opportunity today to put on the vestment of strength and dignity. You know what dignity looks like? It looks like hard work. It doesn't look like a slothful person. It doesn't look like a lazy person. It looks like a person who's industrious. It looks like a person who has their mind set on making the world better and loving their family and providing for their wife and providing for their children. It is a church. It is a bride who has adorned themselves in strength and dignity. Now, there are many more vestments in our wardrobe today. In fact, I'm going to share some with you. They are virtues. The apostles Paul and Peter instruct that women or the bride of Christ should be clothed and adorned with specific virtues. Now, we're not resting the, the, the literal meaning from these passages. Yes, they were talking to women specifically. But if we step back and we view this in a macro way, we see that they are not just talking to women, but they are talking to the church as a whole. The Apostle Paul says in Colossians chapter 3, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with a heart of mercy. One translation says a compassionate heart. Clothe yourselves with kindness. Everybody say kindness. What would our world be today if we were just kind? Well, I thought I'd get at least one amen. He says, clothe yourselves with humility. That's a, that's a beautiful garment that most choose not to wear. Clothe yourselves with gentleness. Clothe yourselves with patience. Whew. And above all these, put on love. Everybody say love. love. Which binds everything together in perfect harmony. So when she opens her wardrobe, she sees those vestments of a compassionate heart, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And it is God's will and God's instruction for her to put on these things, put on humility, put on kindness, put on compassion, come on your body to wrap that belt of love around you, that thing that binds these things together in perfect harmony. 
The Apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy 2, women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control. Now, I get it. We can look at it from that one dimension that it's specifically to women, but we can also see that it's to the church at large, to the bride. It is God's will that we clothe ourselves in respectable apparel, that we do it with modesty and self-control. The apostle Peter offers his words about our adornment and what we wear. He says, let your beauty not be external. Don't let the beauty be about the bling on the outside of you. Now we learned that principle a long time ago at Mount Sinai when Aaron made those golden calves and they were worshiping those golden calves. Moses, he threw those tablets down in anger. God took him back to that mountain, made him ride them all over again. And he said, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna grind those calves down and I'm gonna make you drink it. Why? Because the bling shouldn't be out here. It should be on the inside. And listen to what Peter says. Let not your, your beauty be external, the braiding of hair, the putting on of gold jewelry, or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden or the inner person of the heart with, listen to this, the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. You know what I get out of all of this? What God is speaking to the bride, what he's speaking to us today, he wants a church that is humble before him. He wants a church that instead of becoming its own glory, instead of being ostentatious and flashy, he wants a church that is not made up of all of those things, but a church that is sincere, a church, a bride that is in loving relationship with the groom, a church that has a right spirit, a church that is not haughty and looks down its nose on those who are less fortunate, but a a church that will reach down to the lowest and love them and appreciate them and show them compassion. An elderly Quaker woman replied one time when asked about her complexion and why her complexion was so beautiful. This is what she said. She said, for my lips, truth. For my voice, prayer. For my eyes, pity. For my hands, charity. For my figure, uprightness. For my heart, love. I believe today that it is his will that all of us in this room would adopt the words of this elder Quaker woman, that we would have truth, that prayer would be a part of us and pity upon those and charity and love and uprightness. It is the vestment that is in our wardrobe here today. And finally today, I wanna talk about one more specific vestment that's in our wardrobe, one more, and it is the vestments of our future, the vestments of our future. The, the writer John says in Revelation chapter seven, and one of the elders answered and saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white 
in the blood of the lamb. He said, these are they that have come out of great tribulation, out of great trouble. They have washed their robes and they've been made white in the blood of the lamb. John records on in verse five of chapter three, he that overcometh, he that conquers, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He continues in chapter 19 of Revelation, then I heard what seemed to be a voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters, and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints come to the music stand with me all over this house I'm here to tell you today that there are some vestments in our future there are some beautiful robes that we will receive one day we're going to open up that heavenly wardrobe and we're going to put on that white linen bright raiment we're going to put on that white robe and it is the righteousness of the saints it is a robe that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm here to preach to you today and tell you, you'll trade every old vestment for those beautiful vestments in our future. You'll trade all of those other vestments for that beautiful vestments that God has in store for those that love Him. You'll put on that white robe You'll receive that crown of life. But let me tell you how, how thankful you'll be, how blessed you'll be to be in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You won't, you won't wear that crown. But when you see Jesus, when you see him face to face, you'll take that crown and you'll place it at his feet because of his goodness, his mercy, his love, and the sacrifice he made on Calvary. Today, there are vestments in our wardrobe and there are some, we can't put them on now, but if we'll do the will of God, if we will love him, if we will serve him, if we will be what he has called us to be, one day we're gonna put on that white vestment. We're gonna put on that beautiful robe and we're going to worship him around his throne. I want you to lift your hands all over this sanctuary. Come on, lift your hands all over this house. Lift your hands and worship him right now. Come on, could you thank him for the vestments of her wardrobe? Could you thank him for the vestments that are in the wardrobe of the bride? The virtues, praise, gladness, righteousness, salvation, humility. Oh, come on, all over this sanctuary. I want you to reach across the aisle, join up with a neighbor. Come on, moms. Why don't you grab your kids' hands and love God together here. Come on. We're going to end this service. We're going to praise Him. We're going to love Him. Come on. Can we do it all over this sanctuary? Come on, singers. Let's love Him. Let's thank Him for the vestments of our wardrobe. Let's thank Him for the vestments of righteousness, the vestments of salvation. Come on. Let's thank Him together. 
Let's worship him together. Somebody here today, you want to step out of where you're at. We've got time. It's still early. Come on, you can just take that step toward this altar. Lift your hands. Begin to repent. You know what repentance is? Repentance is taking off some things. Repentance is laying down some things. Lay it down and pick up salvation. Come on, they're going to sing. I want to give you that opportunity. I wouldn't be remiss today if I didn't give you that opportunity to come to this front. Open up your heart and let him touch you. Come on. All over this house. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, that's beautiful. Come on, come from the balcony, from the balcony. All over the floor. Come on. Right now, in the name of Jesus.
thankful for the opportunity to be clean today, to be washed in his blood. Hallelujah. Again, I want to give you an opportunity. If you want to be baptized today, if you want to take off that old man, as the Apostle Paul says, and put on the new man, that's how you do it. You do it through baptism. Baptism in the name of Jesus. So today, if that's for you, if you feel this is the moment, you need to be washed clean. You need a fresh start in life. You need a new identity. Find your identity in the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. You can go to my left, your right. There's a table there. They're ready to receive you. We'll baptize you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. And we'll see you tonight. Church begins at 7. Let's come believing God for an outpouring of His Spirit.